Welcome to English Classes Online where English learning is made easy. Kindly subscribe to our channel. Like and share our videos with your friends and relations. Remember to click on the bell icon for notification whenever a new video goes live on the channel. English Classes Online is an educational channel. Here, English learning is simplified. We teach everything English. This is where literature and English is made easy. We simplify literary analysis and make literary appreciation a fun thing. This is also where content creation is made easy. We show you how to use the English language as a tool for creating content and for creating income for yourself. You are welcome to our channel rest assured that our classes are always informative, educated, and exciting. Let's dive into this lesson right away. This is Benjamin from English Classes Online. In today's lesson, we are going to look at top tips for post-UTME comprehension. And we are taking a sample reading passage from the post UTME uh, exam of UNN. Let's dive into the lesson right away. In this lesson, we are going to look at the following. Number one, why reading comprehension is important in English exams. Two, why students pick wrong answers in post UTME comprehension questions three, the steps to take, and four, sample comprehension passages. Well, actually, we're going to take only one, okay? Sample comprehension passage, okay? So the S is out of it, okay? So let's uh, look at why comprehension is an important part of English exams. Comprehension means understanding, which is key to success in everything we do, especially reading. You know, if you read something and don't understand its meaning or what it is about, then all your effort in reading it becomes a mere waste of time. Learning comp comprehension skills is beneficial in the development of other important skills in education, in career, and in all aspects of life. You know, because if you don't understand anything, then you won't develop, you, you won't uh, uh, advance in it, okay? And in every field of life, learning is the process that takes you from the the, the 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 beginner stage to the expert stage and without comprehension there is no learning because comprehension means understanding so comprehension is central to uh, achieving human success or success in every human activity or field of life now why students pick wrong answers let's look at the reasons. Number one, rushing to answer a question you have not actually understood. So now the remedy is that you should first understand the, what the question means. Okay. Number two, using sentiment. You know, for example, one of the options seems to be true based on your personal experience, but not based on the facts stated in the passage. Okay, so when you bring an idea from outside the passage in providing an answer to the questions that should be based on the passage, then you pick the wrong answer. Even though that answer may be correct based on your knowledge of, you know, another situation outside what is stated in the passage, because you, these questions are based on this a passage because we are always asked to read the passage and carefully answer the questions that follow or answer questions on it. The questions are on the passage, not 
on anything outside the passage. So if if you use sentiment based on your background knowledge and you answer certain questions, those options you pick may be true according to other situations, but not according to the situation uh, stated in the passage. So that is another reason for picking wrong answers. So what is the remedy? Look for the evidence in the passage. So I always tell my students, answers to comprehension questions are usually evidence-based. You must find the evidence in the passage. Even if it is a question that requires background knowledge, then that answer must also be in relation to the passage, okay? Number three, ambig ambiguity caused by unfamiliar words in the passage, okay? Because you have seen some unfamiliar words, you, you are stuck with it, with the unfamiliar word, and you want to figure out the exact meaning of that unfamiliar word, and you get confused as to what uh, is meant by the passage. You, that shouldn't uh, that shouldn't um, cause you into picking wrong answers. You need to use what is called contextualization approach. You know, uh, this will help you to figure out what uh, those unfamiliar words means. To contextualize means to consider something together with the situation, events, or information related to it, rather than considering it alone. Okay, now, for example, if you are, if the word man is used in an unfamiliar, in an unfamiliar way, for example, you know, Musa was asked to man the engine room, to man the engine room, you see, you, you probably have not uh, seen a situation where the word man is used in that situation. It will be quite under, uh, clearly understandable to you if someone says Musa is a man. You understand what a man means. But if, if someone says Musa has been asked to man the engine room, then you have never uh, seen a situation where man is used in that way. Now, you don't need to lose your head trying to figure out what is the exact meaning of man, but try to figure out. You may remove the word man and try to substitute it with other words. Musa has been asked to dash the engine room. What are the possibilities? Control the engine room, take charge of the engine room, you know. So, but somehow, it's something that has to do with, you know, dealing with the engine room, handling the engine room. So that gives you, you know, it's an action that Musa has been asked to take, to take full responsibility of the engine room, okay? So that's how you figure out on familiar words and you don't get stuck, you know? Then let's look at the steps to take uh, when answering questions uh, that, are uh, based on a given reading passage, okay? Of course, there are several reading techniques you can adopt for answering comprehension questions, and you may have, you know, uh, had different teachers, tutors, or lecturers discussing one uh, reading technique or the other. There's really no reading technique that is wrong. You know, you just have to look at the various reading techniques and pick the one that you find most effective, especially the one that will increase your reading speed and enhance your understanding, you know, uh, of the passage. So, Different comprehension passages require different approaches. That's another thing you need to understand. You know, different exams, uh, examination bodies come out with different uh, uh, comprehension questions. For example, the approach you use for Wyatt and Neko comprehension passages may not work for JAMP 
passages or for post jam which is post utma you know uh, post utma passages are you know sometimes similar to jam passages but sometimes you you might find some slight differences that the questions are similar for example jam passages uh, require you to answer from uh, um, i mean um, objective questions while why can neko will give theoretical questions okay so and then jump passages are short they are shorter than why can neko passages uh, when you have post utme passages uh you know sometimes they may have several paragraphs okay and uh, the options are tricky Okay, so that is one thing you need to understand. Now, what are the steps you should take? One, read through the questions first. This will give you prior information uh, about what you are going to look for in the passage. Some people will ask you to read the passage first. There's nothing wrong with it, but you have to compare and contrast and find out which one will work more effectively for you. Some people will want you to first survey, you know, you read the introductory paragraph, then read the first sentence of each paragraph, what uh, we call topic sentences, then read the last paragraph, which is the, where you find conclusion. Then after that survey, then you now read the questions and then you come back to the passage, you read the whole passage and all that. Now. The, the 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 problem I have with such uh, reading techniques is that they tend to waste your time. In an exam uh, hall, you don't have all the time in the world. So reading the question first, you know, is a very effective technique because it, it, once you are reading the question, you already know what you are going to look for in the passage and just reading the question will even give you an overview of what the passage is about okay and if nothing else the fact that you already know what you are going to look for in the passage okay and you have some idea of what the passage is really about that actually equips you to read the passage and understand the passage better okay so that is really uh, very important. So you read, read through the, the questions first. This will give you prior information about what you are going to look for in the passage. Uh, then after reading the questions, then you read the passage. And at this point, you must read the passage with concentration. One, because, you know, why reading the questions first becomes the most effective technique is that no matter what happens, you are still going to read the passage with concentration. This I emphasize. Reading the passage with concentration means you have to read, pay attention when reading the passage to make sure you understand what the passage is all about, which is also what you will get when you survey the passage. Okay, so read with concentration, read for meaning, okay? read with a purpose and read for discovery these two now you know reading with a purpose and reading for discovery okay there seems to be something here what's happening here the pen is not working right Well, it's okay. Let's uh, let me just um, point to what I mean. Okay. Well, let me just point to what I mean. Okay.
It's okay. So let's uh, actually look at um, So here, as I earlier said, you have to read the passage with concentration, read for meaning, and read with a purpose, then read for discovery. Now, reading with a purpose here means that you are going into the passage having something in mind you have read the questions so at least you pick the first question and register it in your mind as you are reading you are already looking for answer to that question and as many as you can remember that immediately you come across a particular piece of information that answers a question you have seen already you underline it or I extract it and that makes the whole thing easier for you and that is what it means to read for discovery. As you are reading, you want to discover the answers already. You know, so it quickens the process because when you read a particular question, you, you are going to take away the keywords from that particular question. And that is what will be a context clue that will help you to look for the 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 answers in the passage and once you discover i need to extract it and of course it makes the whole process easier number three read the questions again this is why reading the questions first becomes the most effective method as far as i'm concerned because even after reading the questions and reading the passage you will still you know you come back to the question you see and after reading the question you still come back to the passage so it's important you begin with the question then know exactly what you are looking for because this is how you avoid picking wrong answers you see the more you understand what exactly the question is about the more likely you are going to pick the right answer, the correct answer, because the important, the reason why students pick the wrong answers is that most of the time they think this is what they, they are required to pick in answer to the question, but they are, pick, they are picking the wrong one. Everything boils down to, you know, having a wrong understanding of the comprehension question. But well, once you understand the comprehension question and you know what you are going to look for in the passage, that is what you want. And you, you are going to score marks based on your accurate answers to the right question, the right answer to the right question. So you should so shuttle between your questions and the passage. And this is how you are going to conquer uh, th those questions. Now, read the questions again. This time you are ready to answer the questions one by one. You see? Now, in this last, you know, your last, in this last visit to the question, you are not going to read the whole questions. You are now going to pick question number one. And once you pick question number one, then you go back to the passage and extract the, the answer. If in your first reading of the passage, you already found the answer to question one, all you need to do is to go back to confirm that this is actually correct. And when once you confirm, then you, you, you pick your answer. And the process is simple. Then number four, scan for the evidence in the passage before picking the option, okay? Before uh, picking the option, you have to scan for the evidence in the passage, okay? So this is what you do. Now, once you, you pick question one, you, you pick the keyword from that question. And then scanning means that 
you are going to the passage just to browse through and look for this the piece of information that will provide answer to this one question when people go for a scan they are going for a specific piece of information in that part of their body that is being scanned okay so and so the scanning technique as a reading technique is reading in order to find a, a specific piece of information and this works very effectively when you adopt the methods we are discussing here so it's a, a it's a tested and proven method that has helped a lot of my students you know and i have gotten testimonies from why a, a lot of people who actually found their comprehension questions very very easy based on this method so let's now move on to look at some other things that can help you keys for unlocking a post UTME comprehension passage. One, subject matter slash thesis statement. You know, in choosing a suitable title for the passage, you need to pick the option that relates the aim of the whole passage rather than part of the passage. Now, if you are looking for the what the whole passage is all about, you are going to find it in the first paragraph which is where you will find the subject matter and the thesis statement. The subject matter is the topic. That is what the, the whole uh, essay or passage or article is all about. Is it about love? Is it about war? Is it about uh, peace? Is it about uh, child care? Is it about health care? Is it about parenting? whatever is the subject subject matter is it about uh, uh, banking a bank a, a, you know banking transaction whatever it is then the thesis statement is the main idea that the writer or the author you know is discussing in that particular passage the main idea the message the central argument the viewpoint this the thesis statement will give you and so this becomes uh, useful when you are asked to uh, choose a suitable title for the passage. You will be able to get it knowing the subject matter and knowing the thesis statement. And you can find this just by reading the first paragraph, which is the introductory paragraph in a passage. Number two, the comprehension questions and keywords, you know, will help you. When you read the comprehension questions, you pick the keywords. Keywords are powerful ways of unlocking uh, a text because a key is what helps you to open a door. And the keyword, therefore, is, a, is the word that helps you to open the door to what you are looking for. For example, on the internet, uh, if, you, if you type in a keyword in your, on any Google search engine, then it will unlock the doors to all the sources where you will get the relevant information so in the same manner if you read a comprehension question you pick the keyword from the question and you'll be looking for these keywords in the passage and when you see them that's a clue that this is where you are going to get the answer so that will help you to unlock the passage and then scanning technique i already mentioned that and others when you pick the keyword, then you use the scanning technique. You are scanning the passage rather than reading the whole thing, wasting time. You are looking for something. You know, scanning technique is like when you are asked to go into a room and pick a particular item. If you get into the room, but you don't know the item you have been asked to pick from the room, you may search the room a hundred times or for a hundred years, your your whole search process will be will be a, a huge waste because you don't know what you are looking for and that's why i emphasize that you read the question first because reading the question first equips you with the information you are going to look for in the passage so even the moment you start reading you are already uh, applying the, the scanning technique because the moment you find what you are looking for you extract it and it it uh, it speeds up the process and simplifies the task. Now, uh, 
topic sentences also help you, you know, because some post UTME passages may have several paragraphs, as I earlier mentioned. So a topic sentence is the main idea contained in each paragraph, and that can also help you to unlock uh, the, the passage. Then another thing you look at is the structure. Consider all the parts that make up the whole passage, and that will help you as well. For example, a good passage is made up of three main parts, uh, sometimes four. The three main parts are the introduction, the body and the conclusion. The introduction is the first paragraph. The body is, you know, the group of paragraphs in the middle. And then the conclusion is the last paragraph. Okay. So now having looked at keys for unlocking this passage, let's now look at our, sim our sample reading passage. And we are taking this from post UTME uh, of UNN. UNN means Stands for University of Nigeria and Suka 2010-2011. This is the instru instruction. Read each passage carefully and answer the questions that follow. And then this is the passage. We are going to skip the passage and then we read the questions first, as I earlier told you. So, and then I will show you the benefit. Okay. This is where the passage ends. And then this is these are the questions question number one in the passage there is an attempt to ex explain that to ensure a totally healthy child now even without reading a line or a word in the passage you already know that this passage is about a healthy child how to have a healthy child to ensure a totally healthy child there's something about the passage that is talking about uh, ensuring a totally healthy child. You already know this, even before reading the passage. Option A, it is necessary to concentrate on the child's physical well-being alone. B, it is essential to reduce the high child mortality and mobility rates. C, it is necessary to take care of other things in addition to the child's uh, physical well-being. D, it is important to keep the rules of hygiene. So when you read through the passage, you'll be able to pick the right option. Two, it is said that differences in ways of bringing up children and educating them, A, achieve the same results, B, are reflected in the personalities, attitudes, and achievements of the individual, C, make people aggressive, D, have nothing to do with educational attainment. Question number three, since the training for social adjustment begins from the moment of birth, our uh, traditional practices, A, are too uncivilized to be helpful, B, need to be modernized, C, are very helpful to the proper upbringing of the child, and D, make the child a stranger to modern civilization. So reading question number three, again, we discover something uh, that shows us the benefit, you see, training for social adjustment begins from the moment of birth. So this tells us more about what the passage is all about. The more you read the questions, the more you learn uh, about the passage, even before reading it. And then you also, from the question, discover what you are going to look for in the passage when you start reading it. So that's the beauty of reading the questions first. Question number four, in spite of the fact that the Western countries now recognize the importance of the early period of childhood in forming a relationship Nigerian hospitals and maternity homes, A, copy the wrong Western practice now being criticized in Western countries, B, improve on local practices and the future of the child is secure, C, ensure that uh, the child is brought up in the right way, D, ensure that the child develops the right skills for establishing relationships. So 
reading more questions, we discover that the passage is about childhood, you know, the importance of early childhood in forming a relationship and how Nigeria hospitals and maternity homes react to this. So you, you see, we learn about Western practice, how Western countries handle the, the, the issue and how Nigerian hospitals and maternity homes handle the issue. So we already have a picture of what the passage is about. Now let's read the last question, question number five. Unless the training of our traditional birth attendants is based on healthy practices, A, our children will be underdeveloped, B, our children will be worse off than those brought up in, uh, in the traditional way, C, our medical services will be unable to provide the right services, and uh, D, our, ec our economic progress will be adversely affected. So now we have read through the questions. And you can see that we know a lot about the passage, even without reading a word yet about the passage. So that is the beauty of reading the questions first. So let's go back now to the passage and then read the passage. And while reading the passage, I want you to take note of how our having read the questions first now give us greater uh, ability, you know, uh, to understand the passage and uh, increased speed of our, re of our reading. Okay, so let's begin to read. Read each passage and carefully answer the questions that follow. The process of social adjustment begins from the moment of birth. We came across social adjustment and we, are, we already know there is a question asked about it. Many of our traditional birth practices ensure that the mother either carries or suckles uh, her child immediately after birth. The baby therefore comes into close contact with the mother at this critical time, you see? That is our traditional birth practices. Moreover, she is forced to stay indoors with the baby for varying periods of time. By this means, the attachment of the baby to the mother, so essential for the child's ability to relate with, uh, to her in future, is secure. This crucial moment in the baby's life is now being recognized in Western countries, while best practices in institutes and maternity homes separate mother and child immediately after birth to the extent that their ability to develop a close relationship may be jeopardized. So you can see that our traditional practices uh, are more beneficial to the child than what the Western hospital had been practicing all along. But now uh, it appears they are they are going to recognize. So let's see. Our Nigerian child of today may therefore be worse off than that of yesterday. You see, we came across this because of the, the actions of Nigerian hospitals and maternity homes in ignoring the traditional birth practices and then uh, practicing the Western uh, the Western uh, methods, okay, separating the child from the mother, that actually makes the child worse off. We saw a question like that, so we already have the answer here, okay. Now let's read the next, the last paragraph. As we move towards the training of our traditional birth attendants, with a view to incorporating them into our health services. Healthy practices such as the one described above must be maintained and encouraged. You see, now this 
passage is giving path math to the traditional bed practices. And uh, that is exactly one thing we can take away. As we go back to the questions, you can now see that we are, we are easily, you know, at home with answering questions now because having read the questions first and then having read the passage itself, we are more equipped, okay, with the answers. The moment we look at the questions, we can easily pick the answers because you know, this method has actually simplified the task and increased our reading speed, also enhanced our uh, ability to understand what we have read. Now, let's look at question one. In the passage, there is an attempt to explain that to ensure a totally healthy child, A, it is necessary to concentrate on the child's physical well-being alone. B, it is essential to reduce the high child mortality and mobility rate. C, it is necessary to take care of other things in addition to the child's physical well-being. D, it is important to keep the rules of hygiene. Now, this type of question, question number one, is a kind of inferential question. The options given here are not, uh, they are not clearly stated or let me say uh, they are not stated in 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 direct words in the passage but we can figure out through elimination for example option a it is necessary to concentrate on the child's well-being alone we are not told that in the passage at all so we we'll eliminate that b it is essential to reduce the high child mortality and mobility morbidity rate is not even mentioned in the passage, so we eliminate it. C, it is necessary to take care of other things in, order, in addition to the child's physical well-being. This is nearest to the answer because already uh, taking care of the child's uh, psychological development, you know, bonding with the mother, is part of the of the care for the child so and we know also that the physical uh, well-being is important you know for instance when the 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 uh, the hospital attendants separate the child from the mother they are looking at some physical uh, factors okay but then there is need also to look at other things so it is necessary to take care of other things in addition to the child's physical well-being. For example, the, the, the child's psychological development, ability to relate, you know, uh, to develop some attitude to relationship. So D, it is important to keep the rules of hygiene, uh, certainly not. So So here we can see that the correct option is uh, C. It's, it's, it appears my the pen is really not working. So let's do without it, okay? So the, op the correct option is C. It is necessary to take care of other things in addition to the child's physical well-being. Question number two, it is said that differences in ways of bringing up children and educating them a, achieve the same results. B, are reflected in the personalities, attitudes, and achievements of the individual. C, make people aggressive. D, uh, have nothing to do with educational attainments. Again, some of the things mentioned here, the, the options are not in any way implied or stated in the passage. So let's eliminate. It is said that differences in ways of bringing up children and educating them A, achieve the same result. It's not stated anywhere in the passage, so we eliminate A. B, are reflected in the personalities, attitudes, and achievements of the individual. This is quite close, uh, you know, because the, the child's personality, when you now begin to talk of the attitude, how someone 
can relate with uh, the mother and with other people. So relationship is being talked about, you know, and you know, relationship, communication, attitude, all these are all um, part and parcel of the things that can make someone an achiever in life. So B is the correct option. Let's look at C, make people aggressive. We eliminate this because it's not any way stated or implied in the passage. D, have nothing to do with educational attainment. There's no evidence that this is true. So the correct option is B. It is said that differences in ways of bringing up children and educating them are reflecting, reflected in the personalities. Uh, please, let's get back are reflected in the personalities, attitudes, and achievements of the individual. That's the correct option. So let's now move on to question number three. Question number three, since the training for social adjustments be, adjustment begins from the moment of birth, our traditional practices, you see, we, we, are, we came across this already and we saw, we picked the answer because we already, and uh, knew we are looking for it. And when we saw it, we picked the answer already. A, are too uncivilized to be helpful. B, need to be modernized. C, are very helpful to the proper upbringing of the child. D, make the child a stranger to modern civilization. So the correct option here is C. We saw that the, you know, traditional bed practices are very helpful to the proper upbringing of the child because they enable the child to develop the proper attitude towards relationships, okay? So that is correct, while other options are eliminated. Then uh, four, in spite of the fact that the Western countries now recognize the importance of the early period of childhood in forming a relationship, Nigerian hospitals and maternity homes, A, copy the wrong Western practice now being criticized in Western countries. Of course, we saw this clearly, you know, in the passage because we read the question first and while we were reading, we came across this and we saw exactly the correct option uh, to this question. B, improve on local, practices and the future of the child is secure. Ensure that uh, the child is brought up in the right way. D, ensure that the child develops the right skills for establishing relationships, okay? So, but you see, it is Nigerian hospitals and maternity homes, their action, what do they do? we saw that they copied the wrong Western practice now being criticized in Western countries because our traditional practices uh, have been uh, allowing the child and the mother to stay close to each other. And by so doing, the, the, the child, you know, develops the right attitude, you know, learning how to relate to the mother. But you know, the, the Western practices have emphasized on separating the child from the mother after birth. So now that the Western countries are beginning to understand that it is better to allow the mother and the child to stay together, uh, Nigerian hospitals and maternity homes are still, you know, dogmatically, you know, can conservatively holding on to the old Western uh, practices. So they, they copy the wrong Western practice now being criticized in Western countries. We saw this clearly in the passage. Then question number five, unless the training, uh, let's reduce this, unless the training of our traditional is based on practices, A, our children will be underdeveloped, B, our children will be worse off than those brought up in the traditional way. C, our medical services will be unable to provide the right services. D, our economic progress will be adversely affected. So you see, we, we can use elimination methods, but we can also remember exactly 
what we have picked from the passage, or we go back to the passage and then we look for the evidence because as I earlier said, answers to comprehension questions are always almost evidence-based. You, you can find the evidence in the passage, even if it is not planned or planned stated, it might be implied, okay? So here we have seen that unless the training of a traditional practice, the children will be washed off. We saw it in the past. Uh, so this is the last question. I want to take you back to the past to show you the evidence that this uh, option B is the correct option. Unless the training of a traditional children will be worse off than those brought up in the traditional way. So let's go back to the passage and I will show you uh, how you can go back to the passage and and uh, find the evidence. Okay. So you can see, and that is uh, here in this uh, third paragraph. This crucial moment of the baby's life is now being recognized in Western countries, while birth practices in some hospitals and maternity homes separate mother and child the extent that ability to close the relationship may be jeopardized. You see, now this is the statement to the answer we have picked. Our Nigerian child of today, therefore, the worst of yesterday. You know, the Nigerian child of yesterday was brought up. Now that the modern traditional practices are trying to separate the child, then they are jeopardizing the, the children's ability to develop a close relationship. So they are now uh, becoming worse off than the children or the child, the Nigerian child brought up under the traditional uh, uh, birth practices. So you, you look for the evidence in the passage. And uh, this is where we draw the curtain on today's lesson. Many thanks for watching today's video. A big thank you to all of you out there for being part of today's episode. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, kindly subscribe to this channel. Subscribe now as a way of giving us support. For notification about new videos, click on the bell icon. You will find the bell icon. Click on it so that whenever a new video is uploaded, you will be instantly notified. If you have actually enjoyed the video, like and share the video with your friends and relatives. This is very important. If you have any comments, leave your comments below. Any questions, any suggestions, we would gladly receive them and respond promptly and positively to them. See you in the next video. I look forward to always seeing you.